There's nowhere I'd rather celebrate this Thanksgiving than right here with the toughest, strongest, best and bravest warriors on the face of the earth. You are indeed that. You know, uh, when I took office, you can believe it, almost three years ago, we were uh, very depleted. Our military was depleted in terms of equipment, you see, right? They were all shaking their heads, that's right. We have all those brand new planes and brand new helicopters and brand new ships being built now, brand new incredible submarines. Probably the most powerful submarines, probably the most powerful weapon in the world is what we're building. The form of submarines, nobody's, nothing's even close. But we have things that nobody's seen, nobody's heard about, and we'll keep it that way. But we've spent two and a half trillion dollars, very close to that number, and uh, very shortly it'll be at two and a half trillion dollars. And while I don't love that, you know, what that does to my budget, because I'm a budget person, uh, we don't have a strong military. Budgets don't matter much, do they? Huh? I kind of have to worry about budgets. So with what's going on in the world today, very important. Two and a half trillion dollars. And nobody uh, beats our great Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, Marines. And we think soon we're going to be adding a thing called space. You know about that, right? Space. We're going to have space covered very well. We're covering it now, but we have to cover it to a much greater extent. And you'll be hearing about that in the coming days and weeks. Concern over an unauthorized aircraft in restricted airspace triggered some very tense moments here in Washington earlier today with the White House going on full lockdown. Our aviation correspondent, Renee Marsh, is here with details. Renee, I understand now. Officials believe it could have been a flock of birds. Yeah, you know, it's funny. The Capitol Hill police saying that it was a slow moving blob of something. In other words, even at this hour, there's still a lot of uncertainty around what sparked this. As you said, lockdown of the White House, uh, the Capitol earlier this morning, it went into restrictive access. Uh, military jets were scrambled. Uh, so there was this frenzy because they believe there was some sort of aircraft in restricted airspace. You can see the uh, Secret Service presence there as well as Capitol Hill Police. They were looking for what was in this restricted airspace for people who don't know. The airspace in Washington, D.C. is some of the most restricted airspace in the entire country. Well, hours after this all unfolded, uh, they found nothing. They found no aircraft. Um, Capitol Hill police saying they saw something on their radar. They are not quite sure what it was. An official at the White House thought perhaps it might have been a drone, but the military saying, look, when we went up, uh, we saw nothing in the sky. So there is this mystery this evening. Uh, they believe, Wolf, that this was indeed a flock of birds, and people at home may be wondering, how is that possible? Quickly, we want to show you an old radar. You see those arrows there? That is essentially what a flock of birds kind of looks like on a radar. Radar, so that's how the mistake yeah, can be. I was be. watching CNN. It brought back some scary memories yeah. when I heard about that lockdown. Uh, let's start with these uh, reports that Rudy Giuliani was in talks to be paid hundreds of thousands of dollars by Ukrainian clients at the same time he was trying to dig up dirt on former Vice President Joe Biden. Those deals were never finalized, apparently. But what does that tell you about Giuliani's motivations? I think it shows how far Giuliani has fallen. I mean, let's think about this for a minute. This was America's mayor, and he is a caricature of his, of his former self. Uh, his self-dealing, double-dealing, and doing these clandestine activities on behalf of the president is uh, unfortunate for our democracy and unfortunate for what we're going through right now. And President Trump now says he didn't direct uh, Rudy Giuliani to do anything on his behalf in Ukraine, and the president added that he's uh, just one of many Giuliani clients. What's, what's your reaction to that? Do, do you buy that? Well, look at the history here. We have a whistleblower's report, and the administration and the supporters within the uh, Republican Party come out and say, well, the whistleblower's report doesn't count because we have no corroboration. Uh, then we have independent witnesses come forward and prove, yes, there is, in fact, uh, evidence that should be concerning to all. Then the argument was there's no quid pro quo. Then we find out, well, yes, there was quid pro quo, but it doesn't count because Ukraine didn't know the aid was being withheld. Then we find out facts that the aid is in, has, in fact, uh, been withheld and Ukraine knew it all along. Then the president argues, well, it, it still doesn't matter because I released the aid and no one knew anything to the uh, contrary. Now we find out that the president knew that the whistleblower's report had been delivered and then made the decision to release it. And while all this is going on, Giuliani is right in the center of it. 
and for the president to suggest that Giuliani, that he didn't really know what was going on, he said it in the call memorandum. The president said it in the call memorandum, get together with Giuliani and get to the bottom of this. New video from overnight, police are warning people um, to stay off the roads around this chemical plant explosion. It happened overnight outside of Houston. They say that there's been extensive damage throughout the city. The city is Port Natchez, and I hope I'm saying that correctly. According to local reporting there, people 40 miles away say they felt the blast. It's the TPC plant. People within a half mile of it have been told to get out. Police say the chemical that's burning and making for orange flames, mind you, is something that's used to make synthetic rubber and plastics. It can irritate your throat, and your eyes, or your nose, and this is weird, but can even, if you're close enough, I suppose, cause frostbite on your skin. At least three people were injured in this explosion. Now, the company says it's focusing on the safety now, the first responders, and the impact on the environment. I've been here 13 years. This is one of the strangest cases. It's one of the craziest things this Tooele City police officer has ever seen. We've never had anything like this. It started Friday with a welfare check at these quiet retirement apartments in Tooele. We had had a history of checking on this female, making sure she was fine. This time, she wasn't fine. Police found 75-year-old Jean Saron Mathers dead on her bed. He's thinking, okay, we just need to investigate this death. Nothing's super suspicious. We can look at, like, uh, food in the fridge, freezers, uh, anything that gives us some type of a timeline as to when that person may have actually died. Then they found the last thing they expected. The detective sees a deep freezer in the utility room. He opens it up and immediately finds a unidentified deceased adult male in the freezer. Based on answers from other tenants, police say the body could have been in the freezer anywhere from a year and a half to 11 years. The biggest piece of the puzzle right now is we need him identified. Now, as officers wait for autopsy results, they say one thing is certain. It's very suspicious. The entire thing is suspicious. special place. In the best restaurants, it is given an almost ceremonial reverence. And for the top chefs, the ultimate measure of their success is the Michelin star. But what if far from being something to wish for, the Michelin star was more of a curse? Marc Berra, one of France's most famous chefs, has earned nine stars in all. But in January, his Maison des Bois restaurant in the Alps lost its third star over a souffle that a critic said tasted of cheddar, an affront that Mr. Verra has not even begun to digest. Je suis prêt à accepter qu'on m'enlève la troisième étoile. Il n'y a pas de problème. Mais qu'on me donne pourquoi, qu'on me dise pourquoi, ce sont, à mon avis, quelque part des incompétents. Vous vous rendez compte qu'ils ont confondu le roblochon, la tome, avec le cheddar. Ils ont dit qu'on avait fait un... A souffle au cheddar, mais n'importe quoi. Now the 69-year-old is taking the Michelin Guide to court. He says he no longer wants its stars and wants the guide to clarify the reasons behind its decision. But it turns out it's not that simple. While Michelin says Vera's talent is not in dispute, it insists its first duty is to inform the consumer. Food, especially in France, is about uh, passion. It's about emotion. 
chefs are real artists. So they are quite proud, sometimes excessive, fragile. And uh, I think in that case, he's saying, OK, I deserve three star because I am who I am. We have to, to avoid any kind of, let's say, emotional blackmail. It isn't the first time that the pressure placed on chefs by the star system has caused controversy. The 2003 suicide of the three-star chef Bernard Loiseau was linked to a system of intense gourmet critique. Several chefs have even asked for their stars to be removed, citing the psychological as well as financial pressure of maintaining their rating. 20 ans de ma vie, je ne dormais pas trois mois avant la sortie du Michelin. J'avais peur de perdre mes étoiles. Est-ce qu'on va le faire demain matin pour les avocats, pour les médecins, pour les garagistes, pour tout le monde Mais, mais, mais de quel droit Mais de quel droit ont-ils ont le droit de faire ça Vera hopes the hearing today will force the guide to be more transparent about how it awards stars and more importantly, why it takes them away. Saskia Van Dorn, CNN, Paris.